now then we come to a lot of learning for you guys. I said earlier that a data book really should provide you with this information. And what I'm talking about is these functional groups, we have to learn some of the organic reactions that they undergo. It's called organic pathways. It's very important because, especially in the pharmaceutical industry, if you want to make a drug, the legal variety, if you want to make a drug, you often start with something, something simple from a plant or an animal maybe, and then you modify that compound, which may go through quite a few stages before you get to your end product, which ends up on the shelf in the pharmacist. Now, these organic pathways mean you've got to learn how to convert functional group A into functional group B, and possibly then B into C, and C into D, and so on. I'm going to go through them in a logical order. I'm going to start with the alkanes. I'm going to tell you what the reactions that you need to know are. And again, you may wish to play, play these videos over and over, and hopefully, like watching a movie, eventually you'll get to remember the stuff there. But I'm sorry, guys, there's no alternative. There's no excuse. This is just simply hard work. It's learning content. I am going to try and put understanding there, which hopefully will make the learning easier and make you remember it better. But there is no substitute this time for craft. I'm sorry. So starting with the alkanes. Now, the alkanes don't have much chemistry. We can burn them. We can turn them into carbon dioxide and water by burning them, which we do when we barbecue using propane, which we do when we put petrol in our car engines, which we do when we put diesel in our car engines or our trucks or our trains, which we do when we put kerosene in our planes, our jet engines. So hydrocarbons burn and they produce carbon dioxide and water. Apart from that, they have just one chemical reaction which we need to know about, and that is they react with halogens. Now, because they only have single bonds, the only thing that can possibly happen here is a hydrogen leaves and a halogen comes in to give you this equation here. For that to happen, you need ultraviolet light and heat. You also need to know the type of reaction is taking place. Now, when one atom replaces another, we call this substitution, which shouldn't come as any surprise because it's an English word we use anyway. There's alkanes done. Alkenes. Alkenes have a double bond. That gives them a hell of a lot more chemistry. I'm going to put the alkene in the middle here so I can draw a few arrows around it. Now, because it has a double bond, things can add to it. The double bond can break, which allows then something to add to that carbon and something to add to that carbon. One of the most obvious reactions is the reaction with hydrogen. If you react an alkene like ethene with hydrogen, you form ethane by adding hydrogen there and hydrogen there. To do that, you require a catalyst, and the catalyst that they usually use is a metal called nickel. This is an addition reaction because there's just one product, unlike the alkane, where there was a second product. So addition reactions are common for alkene double bonds. Another one that you can do involves a halogen, like chlorine. You can add chlorine, which now does this, CH2, CH2, and a chlorine goes there, and a chlorine goes there. So if you add a halogen like chlorine, and it adds very easily, it'll turn it into dichloro one 2 dichloroethane. Okay? Now, I've chosen chlorine because that's probably the most common um, halogen you're familiar with. However, this is a very useful one to know, the reaction with bromine. It does exactly the same thing. CH2, CH2, BR, BR. All of these are addition reactions. 
However, this is a useful reaction for indicating the presence of a double bond. You see, bromine is a kind of reddish colored liquid, dark red, brown, orange, all different descriptions for its color. But this red color, which is due to the bromine, once you break the bromine into the two atoms like so, the red color goes. So if you were trying to distinguish an alkene like ethene from an alkane like ethane, then simply put them both with bromine, give them a shake, this one will take away the red color and it'll become colorless and this one it'll stay red. Now you may remember, well hopefully you remember, I only did it a few moments ago, this does react with halogens in substitution reactions but they need quite strong conditions, heat and UV light. This takes place very easily at room temperature. Another reaction of them is the reaction with steam, H2O in the presence of a catalyst again. And if you do this, you will get CH3, CH2OH. So a hydrogen adds there and an OH adds there. And what we've now produced, of course, is an alcohol. Again, very important chemistry. A little bit later, this is an industrial process used to make ethanol. That's coming in a later video. Another reaction is if you add a hydrogen halide, like say HBr. Now, if you do this, hydrogen goes to one carbon and bromine to the other, and this forms bromoethane. However, if you had an, an alkene like propene, then you would have two possibilities. You could have CH3, CH2, CH2Br, or you could have CH3, CHBr, CH3. Hopefully that makes sense, guys. So these have come from propene, CH3, CH, CH2. Now then, you are expected to know which of those is the favored product. In practice, this one happens virtually nine times out of 10. This one is the minor product. And that's given to you by a rule called Makonikov's rule. And he states that if you add an unsymmetrical reagent, HBr is unsymmetrical, that's symmetrical, that's unsymmetrical. If you add HBr to an unsymmetrical alkene, then there's two possible ways this can add on. You can put the hydrogen there and the bromine there, or you can put the hydrogen there and the bromine there. The rule is that the hydrogen goes to the carbon which already has more hydrogens. So this carbon has two hydrogens, that has one. So the hydrogen goes there, and the bromine goes there. And then the final reaction of the alkanes is again something we'll be dealing with a little bit more later, where we break the double bond and we create a chain, which we call a polymer. If this is ethene, then the polymer will be polyethene or polythene, which we use to make plastic bags out of. Now that is alkene chemistry. You'll see there's quite a bit of chemistry there. You may find, this is what I used to do in university when I had a lot more functional groups to learn, you might find if you draw something like that out on a piece of paper and stick it on your wall and just look at it, then it's surprising how you can remember it. Take a screenshot, if you like, from the video and then blow it up in Word or something, copy and paste into Word, that would work beautifully for you. Um, I'm going to do a few videos because obviously I don't want to do them all in one video. So I'm going to stop there and the next one we're going to look at is the halo alkanes.